today on Judge Faith. This ex-bandmate strikes a chord with the defendant. What happened to your guitar? Well, my guitar got like Jimi Hendrix. Why did you take his guitar and smash it? Were you just having fun one day? Yeah, I mean, it's everybody's dream to do that. <laughs> was this a guitar that you used in, for the this band? This was a guitar that my mother gave to me when I was 13 years old. And you left it there for two months. And later, is there a kitty cat laptop saboteur? She had originally told me the cat had been messing with my laptop. It was playing with the cord rather aggressively. Now you're saying when you told him that it was a joke? Uh, maybe. I'm trying to get a straight answer from you at some point before we leave court today. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Greg Albert says his ex-bandmate was supposed to pay for the electricity while they lived together, but the defendant stuck him with the bill. He's suing for the unpaid electric bill. He's joined in court by his roommate, Eli Maloney. Defendant Levi Prody claims he wasn't even living in the house when the plaintiff ran up the electric bill. He's countersuing for personal property damage. He's joined in court by his girlfriend, Marta Couric. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Albert versus Prody. Thank you, Barbara. Greg Albert, you are suing the defendant Levi Prody for $1,236 for an electric bill? Yes. That's you say correct. he failed to pay? Yeah. And you are counter-suing, sir, for $600 <clears throat> for damage to your personal property. I am, yes. And I understand both of you brought witnesses with you today? Yep. Yes, we do. Okay, you can both have a seat, and I'll talk to you shortly. Okay, Mr. Albert, tell me what's going on here. Levi and I met each other about three years ago uh, at a party, and we pretty much clicked really well. We both like music. We decided to get a house uh, with a big basement in it so we could practice. And uh, Were you in a band? Yeah, we were. What kind of band? I was like, metal. Okay, so you said after you moved in, you started having some issues? Yeah, yeah. Um, the one day I got home from work and I just saw the electric bill in the mail and I decided to open it and it said that a past due amount was over $1,000. Really? Yeah. What was going on, sir? Well, because we were, you know, playing music, we had amps, we had flat screen TVs. Our whole house was like a we radio. Okay, so I want to tell TV. you what okay. you said in your answer. Maybe you don't remember. You told me in your answer that your agreement was you would pay your third of the rent, right. which was $250 a month, and you would pay the electric bill in full because it was in your name. The electric bill went up drastically because there were two more people living at this house. How many months did you not pay the bill at all? Well, there was, I was past due two months. Did you ever tell them, hey, I'm not paying the yeah. bill because oh, it went totally. up two, did he ever tell you that? Most of the time he said anything about the electric bill, he'd be like, hey, I'm a little bit behind on it, but I am going to take care of it. Okay. I did. I talked to Andy. I talked to Eli. Like, I was asking, you know, for, like, help on whatever they could do because, you know, as long as we made a payment to avoid it getting, like, too out of hand. And I think that was kind of, like, the start. Like, that was the start of a lot of bad things to come. Okay. You're the third roommate, right? Yes, Your Honor. What do you know about this electric bill? I uh, know that uh, that was the uh, the agreement that we had. That like I mean, Levi paid uh, one pays the electric. Okay. But as far as I knew, that was that was the uh, the agreement they had going on. Okay, thank you. You wrote in your complaint that out of the goodness of your heart, you told the defendant he could stay in the home until May 31st. Yeah. Only under under one condition. Yeah. And what was that condition? <laughs> uh, Marta couldn't be there. Marta is that his girlfriend? Yes. And why is that? Uh, because she was really annoying. And uh, <laughs> a lot of nights that she would be there, I mean, she was always there. What do you mean by annoying? Um, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, she'd be drunk in our living room and just kind of shouting. And uh, I had to work at 7 o'clock a, a lot of the days afterwards. Well, actually, what you wrote in your answer, she had the most annoying voice you ever heard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes. that's the condition? <laughs> so that's it? Yeah, yeah. What do you have to say about this, ma'am? <laughs> uh, like, I'm, we all had parties. All, everyone would be partying. For some reason, he, like, he just didn't like me for some reason, so he would always be like, Marta has to leave, 
or like we would just be laying in bed together. You guys would be having a party, and he'd be like, Marta, you have to leave. Like, what the? This is something. Ma'am, you can't use that language in court. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Or like, um, your girlfriend started most of the problems. She um peed on Levi's. You can't use that word I'm either. I'm sorry. <laughs> she peed on Levi's like nasal inhaler. She did that. She like would Thank cause you, Marta. You can have a seat now. Thank you. Okay. And, <laughs> your Honor. I think uh, I think I've made my point with uh, Marta. <laughs> Coming up on Judge Faith, did the defendant get exiled to the basement? So instead of putting you out on the street, they said you could stay in the basement. Right, and that sounds so generous. It sounds like, yeah, like good guys, you know, but I not. did not, <laughs> I never once said that you had to go to the basement. But what was the issue? What was the issue? And later, does the cat have the defendant's tongue? Did you tell him that the cat had chewed on his computer cord? I, Yes or no? Yes or no? She knows that she's in trouble. Plaintiff Greg Albert says his ex-bandmate never paid the electricity bill while they lived together. Defendant Levi Prody claims there were too many people in the house using the electricity, and he doesn't owe anything. What is your counterclaim about, sir? So they didn't want me in the house anymore, so they gathered together in a little, like, meeting and, and basically came up with this idea that it would be get out or go in the basement. So I had to go in the basement. I because had you to. weren't paying rent at that point. Yeah, but the so funny thing is... So instead of putting you out on the street, they said you could stay in the basement. Right, and that sounds so generous. It sounds like, yeah, like good guys, you know, but I not... did not, <laughs> I never once said that you had to go to the basement. But what was the issue? What was the issue? Honestly, all my, like my bed got moldy, my clothes got moldy. In the um, basement? In the basement, right. Why so, is that their fault? Because the basement was not ready to be lived in. You know what I mean? Like, What's the rest of your counterclaim about? Well, the rest of it is uh, basically my guitar. Uh, and what happened to your guitar? Well, you my claim. guitar got smashed, and <laughs> like, I, it looked like like the guitar. It must have said something really mean to them, and they just like gang jumped it or something. It, it was bad. Let I've never seen a guitar smashed court. so hard. Did you do that to his guitar? It's pretty impressive. Like, yeah. good job. Yeah, you did. did it. Yeah. Um, Why? But I do want to. That guitar was worth maybe seven dollars at a garage sale. Like. But why would you do that to his guitar? Because he didn't come back for it. He never asked for it. Well, there were so because he didn't come back like, for it, and he left it there. You just house. took it upon yourself to destroy I, it. I told him that anything he wanted to get out of the but house. But why? Why did you take his guitar and smash it? Were you just having fun one day? What's? Yeah, why did you do yeah, that? Yeah, I just I didn't think he cared about it. So you just took it and smashed it. Yeah, I mean, it's everybody's dream to do that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's very therapeutic. Was this a? <laughs> Was this a guitar that you used in, for the this band? This was a guitar that my mother gave to me when I was 13 years old. You know, I feel bad that I left it there because obviously I wasn't expecting that to happen. Well, you can't, and you also, when you move out, you can't expect someone to keep your right. items forever and right. you left it there for right. two months. Totally. Here's what I think about your guitar and your property. You moved down to the basement, you made a choice to go down to the basement and take your things to the basement. I'm sorry Correct. that it got molded, but they're right. not responsible for that. Right. And then when it comes to the guitar, I find that you effectively abandoned the guitar when you left it at that house for over two months before you ever tried to come back to claim it. They don't have a duty or obligation to keep your property for months on end. So in that regard, I find that you abandoned the guitar. I'm not going to order them to pay for the guitar, although I think it was silly for you to destroy it. My judgment in I, this case. I just want to say, I wouldn't have done it if I knew it had sentimental value to you. All right. Judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,236. I'm ordering you to pay the judgment. Plaintiff Ryan Veal says his ex friend borrowed his laptop to do her schoolwork, and when she returned it, it was damaged. He's suing for the cost of a laptop computer. Defendant Katie McGregor claims she had nothing to do with the damage done to the plaintiff's laptop, so she owes him nothing. Ryan Veal. Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant Katie McGregor? Hi. 
for $2,779 for a laptop and desktop computer? That's correct. Okay, so why don't we start from the beginning? Are the two of you friends? We um, had actually been friends since probably 2011. That was about when we met. And we stayed friends all the way up until just last month, October 2014. Okay, so you use a laptop for your schoolwork? Yes, I got it because I was working um, not only with drawing and painting, but I was also doing some graphic work as well. Okay, and tell me what happened with your laptop. Uh, the first two weeks of January when we first started school, uh, Katie had asked to borrow my laptop to work on, um, I don't know if it was paper or some artwork, but she'd used it a couple of times before and I told her that was fine. And I gave it to her and she returned it back to me the next day and she said that it hadn't been working, but it had been working just fine when I had had it. Mm -hmm. But you know, she had borrowed it multiple times, there had never been a problem, so I believed her. It just, it wasn't working properly and the charge wouldn't hold. So when I turned uh, the And how long had you had it then? I had had it for two years and yes. it had been working completely fine. Okay. So you had it for two years, she borrows it for a day, you get it back, and what do you notice? It, the computer's acting a little bit funny and the battery um, had a really low charge. So I plugged in the charger into the computer to see if I could charge the battery up and um, my roommate was with me at the time. She pointed out that there was a burning smell coming from the laptop and some smoke. You borrowed the laptop? Yes. You used the laptop? Mm -hmm. Did you have any problems with it? Uh, no, not really. Um... It was kind of wiggling loose to begin with, I think, the charger. Okay. She was at a party. She wasn't out. She was at a party while her friend watched her cat, Ava. Okay, it's so Eva. tell me what's going on Sorry. with the... T t um, what you say? It's Eva? <laughs> what did you say the cat's name is Eva? Eva. Okay. Um, like so Longaria. tell me what's going on here. What happened? You left the laptop with someone else? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Really what I was leaving was my cat because um, she was still young then. She was about six months old or so. So you use the laptop, but you leave it because you're going out. She's not going to take a laptop with her when she goes out. So Yeah, would you rather have me have done that? I would have rather you not borrow it at all if you're going to a party. <laughs> so you leave the laptop. So you leave the laptop at home. And according to you, your friend didn't use it, right? He didn't. So you're the only person who yeah. used the laptop, and you yeah. never noticed that there was a real issue? Not really. But you said the cord was sort of loose. Maybe, yeah, really. <laughs> okay. You don't know? You don't well, know? Well, I only worked on it for a little bit before I left the party, to be honest. She's, I mostly just kind of crammed. She's lying. Why do you say that? <laughs> when she told me about the incident, because uh, she had originally told me it hadn't been working when she had it. Did you tell she, him that? Uh, this was like a year ago. It was January, that wasn't that long. It was nine months, that's long enough to have a baby. It's not okay, a baby, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> You're worked up over it like it is a baby. Miss, Miss McGregor, I'm asking you a question. Do you remember telling him that the laptop wasn't working when you had it? I honestly don't remember much from that night. I do, I remember. Coming up on Judge Faith, the Facebook scratching post. They were trying to like break down my character and like they were calling me names on the Facebook post. Saying that you are a bad friend, which is what she said and which is what you are, is not bringing down your character. I'm not a bad friend. Plaintiff Ryan Veal says his ex-friend damaged his laptop and should pay for a replacement. Defendant Katie McGregor claims she didn't break the computer and owes nothing. She had given me back the laptop and said that it hadn't been working when she got it, but it had been working when I had given it to her, but because she had used it multiple times before and she was my best friend for four years, I trusted her wrongly, but I trusted her and I thought, you know, maybe that it hadn't been working properly. So when do you find out or what leads you to believe that she's now responsible if you got it back and you thought perhaps it was a manufacturing issue? Well, when I initially talked to them, they said it could have been a manufacturing issue and then they kind of immediately had me buy a computer from them. That's the second computer. So I carried on with my life thinking it could have been a manufacturing error. And in October, because we're still in the same degree, we were working Nine on, months later. Yes. Okay. We were working on a project together and I was complaining about my computer because it was a little bit less expensive and it also wasn't as good of a quality. He was going on and on about it. I was complaining, yes, about how it wasn't as good of a computer. And I noticed that she was acting a little shifty. So um, I asked her, you know, what, what's going on? And she said that she had needed to tell me something that had been weighing on her conscience. 
And um, she said that back in January, when she had went to the party, that the person watching the cat had told her that the cat had been messing with my laptop and that it had been working beforehand, but it was not working afterwards. What Did she tell you how the cat had been messing with it the laptop? It was chewing on the cord where the cord was plugged in. It was playing with the cord rather aggressively. Did you tell him that? I just, I presented it as a joke, really, because I was like, maybe, what if, well, like, what if? That's not something to joke about. Uh, Miss, Miss McGregor, Miss McGregor, I want you to look at me. I'm asking you a question. Mm -hmm. Did you tell him that the cat had chewed on his computer cord? I said Yes that... or no? Yes or no? Mm, yes. OK. And now you're saying when you told him that it was a joke? Probably because she knows that she's Stop. in trouble. I want to hear the answer to the question. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a joke. I just didn't think it was that serious because I don't know if my cat did that. I don't think that my cat would have done that. But someone told you that they saw your cat chewing on the cord. Apparently someone told him, yeah. You told me that. You told me that they told I'm you that. Ma'am, I'm trying to get an answer from, a straight answer from you at some point before we leave court today. OK. It's very possible that my cat might have done it. <laughs> and how do you know it's very possible? <sighs> to be honest, my cat is kind of a <laughs> She <laughs> okay. She's you, nearing you can't, on two okay, years you can't old use still that okay. word either. Gotcha. Uh, I actually have pictures of my cat, if you're interested. Or... Because unlike your laptop, she is like a baby to me. Yeah, I can see. I'm sure you probably have scratch marks, because she's such a lovable little angel. You submitted a Facebook post as evidence? Yes. OK. Let it's me see the Facebook post. Right here. After um, we had had our fight, after she tried to say that she wasn't responsible because her cat did it, not her, and that's completely ridiculous. Um, she left, slammed the door. My roommate overheard this argument. My roommate's the one responding on the Facebook message where she basically all but admitted to it and said that I was ridiculous for being upset over something that had happened nine months ago. So you wrote on your Facebook wall, Ms. McGregor, mm -hmm. for everyone to see. It's funny how suddenly this is relevant to you even though it's been dealt with for over a year. What do you mean by dealt with? Because he purchased a new computer? Yes. This it is ridiculous, you're ridiculous. You act like a 20-year-old. I just want to say that. <laughs> you have his phone number. You can text him. You can call him. You can have a conversation with him. But instead, you choose to write a post on your Facebook wall thinking maybe or maybe not he will see it. They came for me. They came for you? Yeah, they were trying to, like, um, break down my character. And, like, they were calling me names on the Facebook posts. <laughs> Saying that you are a bad friend, which is what she said and which is what you are, is not bringing down your character. I'm not a bad friend. A bad friend is not... A friend that is good does not keep a secret from somebody after breaking their property for nine months and I then just drop sure it out I was never sure if I blue. broke your property, though. I, I want definitive proof that my cat did it. We are done talking about your cat. <laughs> And now, Judge Faith rules. You're not only suing for your laptop. Yes. For the, you, it, although it was two years old, you're suing for the price you paid for it. I'm, In addition, you're asking for her to pay for your new desktop yes. computer that you purchased as well. Yes. I think that's a bit much. And I have the receipt for that as well, and the proof of purchase. I just want to be clear on one thing. The entire time you had his laptop, did it ever work for you? Yes. Yeah. The new value of a laptop of this make and model is around $1,489. Depreciated value around $700. Judgment in this case for the plaintiff, $700. Okay. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story.